Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Stephanie and this is my Glowworm Nova and I've been an online reseller since 2002. Right now I sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, and Facebook Marketplace and in today's video I'm going to share with you what I sold in the month of June that brought me a profit of $3,840. So this video series is going to be broken up into two parts because I know you don't want to hear me rambling on for an hour. So I'm going to share half in this video and half in next week's video of what I sold in the month of June because there is a lot of stuff. And I'm only going to show you the highlights of things that I want you to be looking for when you're outsourcing so you can have some hopefully great sales too. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off with eBay. And in the month of June, I sold 60 items for $2,770.62. And now that was my profit after eBay fees and after my cost of the items. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this first item here is this Boyd's Bears Montel Chatsworth Plush Moose Puppet. And I also put that it was a reindeer in case somebody else, you know, may not have known that this guy was actually a moose. They, they look the same to me, honestly. Um, but on his tag here, it had all the information we needed to know. And I bought this guy at a thrift store for $6.40, and I sold him for $47.95 which gave me a profit of $33.69. And I think actually I'm gonna start rounding these numbers because I don't think you really care about the cents. So anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> this next one, this was hilarious. I got this in a thrift store probably right around Christmas time. This is a Fleet Phospho Soda. It's basically an enema. It's an enema plush, which I thought was hilarious. I paid a dollar seven for him and I thought somebody would probably want this for like a gag gift or something. Uh, maybe somebody who has problem going. I don't know. I mean, I would give this to somebody for a gift and that was actually my plan if I didn't sell it. Anyways, I sold this for $23, which brought me a, um, a profit of $20.70. Okay, up next I have this set of five Georges Briard signed gold green glasses with ferns and leaves. They're a low bile style of glass. And everyone that lists these online said they were signed, which basically means at the bottom of the glasses is a signature, as you can see right there. And when I was running comps, I didn't see any that looked like this and none that had the same exact style. Uh, so I didn't really know how to price these at exactly because prices for his glasses were just kind of all over the place, depending on the design. So what I did is I ran an auction and I just decided I'm gonna put, you know, what would be an amount that I would be happy with, excited about. And so I priced it at $90. I only got one bid, but I, I was, I, again, I was ecstatic about getting $90. So that brought me a profit of $73 on the set of five glasses. Okay, so up next I have a set of two LL Bean size 44 hiking cargo shorts. And I got these at a church sale, and I don't normally pick up a whole lot of clothes. Uh, the shorts were only $2 a pair, and because I was able to find two pairs, I was willing to purchase these uh, because I can list them as a lot. And I have found that men's clothes, especially pants and shorts, do well set as a lot. Now, if I would have sold these separately, it probably wouldn't have been worth my time so much. I like to get $20 or more profit per item. And also I hate selling clothes, so it has to be really something good to me and bring me a good profit to pick it up. Anyway, so this sold in about a week and I made $35 on this. Okay, at that same church sale, I also picked up this Ralph Lauren Bleeding Madras button up shirt and I paid a dollar for this, which brought me a profit of $22. And that is the name of this style of pattern where it's kind of like a faded plaid type of look. Okay, this is a Pottery Barn designer doll and I didn't make that up that's actually what's on the tag here uh, when I was uh, looking up the comps that's what they're called they're called a designer doll and her name is Maylee I think that's how you pronounce that I might be wrong um, anyways so she's a plush she looks like a handmade doll but obviously she's not she's from Pottery Barn she was made in a factory maybe by kids Maybe that's why it's called Pottery Barn Kids. I don't know. Anyways, I paid two dollars and fourteen cents for her at a thrift store, and she brought me a profit of thirty-three dollars. Oh, and as a note, I, I just want to mention when you're hearing me talk about these totals, sometimes the shipping is correct down here, um, and sometimes it's not. I do have a one dollar surcharge on my shipping. I know not everybody does that, 
but it helps kind of buffer my expenses and um, so that's what I've done for quite some time. I've never had anyone complain about it and the buyers never know about that because it's all built in here. That's just my handling charge. Um, and also sometimes I'm able to get the shipping a little bit cheaper than what's quoted here. Okay, and at an estate sale, I picked up this set of micro cassettes. These are actually for like a telephone answering machine. I don't know who in the Seinfeld world is still using this, but I got all of these and they are in two separate listings or two separate photos rather. You don't see all 27 in one because I had this pack in one listing and this pack in another listing and the buyer asked if I would combine them so they can save on shipping. Sure as heck would. So I made $66 on this set of micro cassettes. Okay, at a yard sale, I picked up this box of Aramis After Shave Splash, and I paid $3 for this, and I actually picked up, I think, four boxes total, so I'm just reusing the same listing over and over again until they all sell. And this sold for $39, which brought me a profit of $33. Okay, this was another thrift store find. This is Crosil English Garden Decorative Fabric. This is just fabric. They're, it's just to make whatever kind of granny house dreams you have come true. You can make the pillows, the curtains, the uh, balloon valance, which aren't we glad that went out of style. Wow, that's a look. Um, anyways, I paid $5.31 for this package and it sold for $49.88, uh, which brought me a profit of $43. And Crosil is a very good brand. I'm not sure if they're still selling anymore. It used to be sold at like Dillard's and JCPenney and stuff like that. Um, in my past life, I used to sell this kind of stuff at the JCPenney and it's very expensive or was very expensive to purchase. Um, <laughs> like if you were to make, make this room, this, this room probably would have cost you thousands of dollars to put this together. It, it costs a lot to be this cheap as Dolly Parton likes to say. All right, I found this item on Facebook Marketplace actually, and they were asking $20 for this. So I went to go pick it up and I didn't see any comps for this exact same snow globe online. So I priced it high according to what other ones had sold in the past for and priced it a little bit higher than that because again, I only had, I had the only one in town. So this one probably took a couple weeks, maybe a month to sell. And it sold for $200, which brought me a profit of $182. And this one does play, um, how much is that doggy in the window? Now, when I took this picture, I shook it up so you can see that it was a snow globe and they had all the, the flying spots in, in the globe. And it was just so cute. 101 Dalmatians is my favorite movie as a kid. I used to have my entire room as 101 Dalmatians. I used to want a Dalmatian, but until I found out how hyper they were. So I got one of these. And regardless of what she's acting like right now, she is not always this tired, guys. This is, I'm not going to say it's an act, but it's kind of an act. <laughs> uh, maybe she's camera shy. I don't know. Okay, up next for $1.07, I picked this up at a thrift store that was closing. This is a Sears Kenmore sewing machine accessories button hauler. Button hauler, you didn't hear me say anything else. And stitch cams in the case. Okay, I sold this for $75, which brought me a profit of almost $70. And I'm not sure exactly how these work. I know they have these pattern designs on these. They're basically like plastic discs that are about, I don't know about this, but outside of a quarter basically. And these button haulers, and they go to a sewing machine. That's literally all I know. It's a complete set. And this particular one, I, didn't, I don't think I saw any currently available. So this one went pretty quickly. I would say it, it, in about a week or two it sold. And I think I got this also at that same sale. I paid a dollar for it also. This is a Panasonic stereo cassette deck player and it's for parts of repair. It did not work. I couldn't get it to, to turn the cassette um, at all, but it sold for $25, which brought me a profit of almost $24 because the buyer overpaid on shipping just a little bit. Okay, up next is probably one of my biggest plush sales of June, up there at least. I paid $2 for this Manhattan toy, Carl the Goat uh, Woodlander stuffed animal, and he sold for $100, which brought me a profit of $88. Now, let me tell you how I priced this guy, and I kind of went off comps and why it's, sometimes it's important to do that. So when I was looking for comps for this guy, 
Every single one had already sold, and I think all of them had sold for around $25. Now, sometimes when people are selling things, they just make up a price. Oh, well, 25 bucks might, you know, that sounds like a lot to a lot of people for a stuffed animal, and, and it is. It is a lot of money for a stuffed animal. But to me, it's like, if I can milk that goat for all he's worth, I'm gonna do it. So, there weren't any available currently. So what I did is I looked at previous solds on Terapeak. And if you don't know how to research on Terapeak or how to find it on eBay, go back to my mystery plush video. And the last half of that video, I show how to find Terapeak and I talk more in depth about how I price. Um, anyway, so what I did is I typed in Manhattan Toy Company plush and I sorted it from highest to lowest. And so I priced at the top of what people had paid for for Manhattan Toy Company which was $100. And that sounds like a crazy price, but people were paying that for that brand, for this brand. So that's what I did. And believe it or not, he sold in about a month or two. I don't remember, it was pretty quick. I mean, honestly, if this is an unusual plush, I mean, how many times have you ever seen a, a goat stuffed animal? Anyway, so th that's just a little, little tip there on how to price for you sometimes. Okay, and up next, at that same thrift store that was closing, I picked up the set of Clairol Set and Go electric hot rollers with curlers and pins. And I didn't actually test it in my hair, but I turned it on and it heated up just fine. I wasn't going to pretend I was Frenchy. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this sold for $30, which brought me a profit of $25. Now, everything at that thrift store was a dollar when it was closing, but this also came with a hair dryer in that same pack. So I just divided up the cost after tax. And so this sold in, in a few days. And what caught my eye about this and maybe what, what caught the buyer's eye is this classic, I just love this, this design. Really graphic and it was yellow with the red and you could just tell by looking at it that it was old. Up next I have this Seth Thomas metronome and it's in this wood case. I got this at a thrift store that I frequented. So what had happened was I had went to this thrift store where I usually go like every week and the employee recognized me from coming in so often. I, I'm not going to have any vanity. It's probably because of my glasses are a very distinct look. Um, anyway, so he said, I've got a cart in the back. I'll roll it out for you. So I rolled out this cart and on top was this wooden pyramid. And someone else was also shopping too. And she grabbed it and picked it up and started looking at it. And I was just like sending her vibes to put it down because I just had a feeling it was worth something. I didn't know exactly what it was at the time, uh, but she went ahead and opened it. And I'm glad she did because I don't know if I would have figured it out. Or maybe I would have, but I don't know if I would have figured out instantly how to open it like she did. And she opened it and I could see that it, what it, what it was. And she put it back in the cart. So I grabbed it pretty quickly. And once I looked it up, I kept it in my cart where no one else could get it. And it sold for $120 in a few weeks, so I made $107 on this item. Okay, up next is another thrift store find. This is an Avon Kirby Koala Bear. I know he doesn't kind of look like a koala bear, but that's what he is, and I was able to find out that was his name. Uh, normally, this doll has a, a shirt or a pajamas or some kind of clothing that goes with him, and if you can find that, he's worth even more. He also has a book series, if you can find that and maybe pair that with him again, worth even more than the $90 I got for him, which brought me a profit of almost $79. And let me show you the tag on this guy. And this is the tag here. It doesn't look like anything special. It just says Avon on it. Okay, at an estate sale, I picked up this Etienne Agner. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but we're going to go with it. Uh, shoulder ba bag. And it was in this beautiful red oxblood that sounds gross. Uh, burgundy color, but that's what it was called. Uh, and it came with this little uh, mirror also. And she was really unique and cute. And it sold for $50, which brought me a profit of $38. Okay, at a yard sale. This was last year I picked this up. I had this guy for a long time. But remember, travel has been closed down for quite some time. So not everybody has been doing their normal travel, their normal business, whatever they want to do. So Briggs & Riley is a Bolo brand. And this one here I sold for $57, which brought me a profit of $50. And again, it did take me a year to sell it. Um, 
but I would definitely still pick up this brand again. Now this one had some flaws on the back. You can see it was kind of repaired here. And I did not know until the college picker posted on his Instagram stores that Briggs and Riley does have a lifetime warranty on their product. So next time I find something from this brand and it's damaged, I'm definitely gonna try to take advantage of that and see what happens. But still a nice and tidy profit on that item. Okay, this next item. I got it in an estate sale where grandma was wild and out. Okay. I'll tell you about that in a second. But this is a vintage Oster Vibra massager. It's a massager for whatever you want it to be. I paid $4 for it and I sold for $90 really quickly. I think in like two days, which brought me a total of $81 profit. Now I know this was grandma's because grandma had a lot of church clothes on the rack that they were trying to sell and grandma had some stuff that was probably from Fredericks of Hollywood. So grandma was wild. I mean, I'm snaps for grandma, snaps for grandma. But yeah, check out the bathrooms at estate sales always. You might find some gems like this that you may or may not want to touch and pick up. But for $80, I will touch and pick up items like this. <laughs> okay, these next four items are side of the road finds. I pick up stuff on the side of the road all the time. I'm always on the lookout. So this first item I found near a church sale. It was just on the side of the road. Somebody else had, I guess, cleaned out their, you know, yard sale stuff. So this is a Siegfried and Roy white tiger mug. I just loved this. It was really cute. It has the tiger on the side. And again, this was free. It sold for $30, which brought me a, a total of $21. Um, I think I had to pay a little bit extra on shipping. I think the buyer, I think I char undercharged the buyer on the shipping on that one. Okay, on the side of the road, I found a huge tote, like the big, the big ones, uh, full of these Geppetto cuddle kids. I don't want to cuddle these kids, but I found a whole tote of these different styles of dolls. Some of them are animals. Some of them are like the elves like this, uh, all sorts of creepy things to haunt your dreams. But this one sold for $40, which brought me a profit of almost $35. And that same box of stuff, I also found this Windows Vista. Uh, you okay? You see that fly? <laughs> I found this Windows Vista computer program with the key. Now, when I was researching these computer products, I found that it was important that you show a picture of the key. I guess that's also important so someone doesn't get the item and claim they didn't have the key. Here it is right there so no one could scam you. And that sold for $60 which brought me a profit of $54. This is another side of the road found fine and this one did take almost a year for me to sell and I actually had more than this. I think I probably had about 20 of these total. Some of them I sold as sets. Some of them I sold like one or two at a time. Finally, I was down to the last 10. I'm like, I'm just gonna sell them all together. So again, these were a free pickup. These are Heinz 57 condiment caddies and they sold for $120, which brought me a profit of $114. Again, because I was able to get the buyer a little bit cheaper shipping than that. Okay, moving on to Mercari. Now, in the month of June, I sold 22 items for a profit of $529. Now, a lot of those were lower dollar items, so I'm not going to show you a whole lot uh, from my Mercari sales. Most of them were $10 to $15 and under, but I want to show you the better items. So the first item that I'm going to show you is this vintage Waffle Wee baby blanket with these pastel stripes. And this sold for uh, $29. I originally had it marked $40, but... I marked it down to 29 once I realized that was a bit high. I only paid $1.60 for this, so that brought me a profit of uh, $23. Next, I have this Turing Temple Build Marble Computer Game. Computer. There is no screen involved in, the, in actually making the game itself. I think later on you use the computer to play it. Uh, but the actual marble part, you, you build yourself, which is pretty cool. Uh, this set I paid four dollars for. I think I got this at a yeah I got this at a thrift store, and I it did not have all the parts. But when you opened up the book on the inside, it says to contact the company if you're missing parts, which I was. I was missing a handful of things, and they sent me these pieces for free. So that's a tip there, and I've seen that a few times on games. So if you're missing items, 
see if you can request the pieces to make a whole set. So this sold uh, for $51, which brought me a profit of $40. Okay, and at a yard sale, I picked up this Christopher and Banks kitty cat cardigan sweater. This is so cute. If this would have been my size, I would have kept it. I don't know if you know this, I am a crazy cat lady. Legit, I have seven cats, believe it or not. Um, but anyways, I, I had to pick up this sweater. I knew somebody would want it. I paid only $2 for this, and it sold for $30. Anyway, it sold for $30, which brought me a profit of almost $24. Up next is this Jim Benton Happy Bunny shot glass. Now, I know this picture looks horrible, and that's because it is, but let me tell you why. I had a set of three of these Happy Bunny shot glasses that I was selling for $45. That's why it has this original price. And a buyer messaged me and asked if I would separate them. And I had just, I had just listed these, so I said, no, not really. I'm not really wanting to separate them right now. And they said, well, how about $30 for the one? Cha-ching, sold, I'll edit that for you. So what I did is I just cropped out my original photo to show the one shot glass that he wanted, which is this, this hilarious bunny. Uh, and he's pointing to his butt cheek and it says bottoms up on it. Uh, and this person said they collect these happy bunny shot glasses. Uh, so I only paid $1 for this one. I So I got a whole set of them for three. And it sold for $30, which brought me a profit of almost $25 for a single shot glass. Okay, up next is this Blue Sky Heather Goldmine Starfish Wall Decor. These are ceramic wall decorations. And you can see there, the information that you need is right on the back. Heather Goldmine, Blue Sky. And I just had the purple and the pink ones that I was selling here together. I did have the little teal one that goes with the set also, but it was broken and the the way it was repaired did not look that good so I don't want to put it in this set so I paid two dollars for the set and it sold for 38 which brought me a profit of almost 31 dollars and these just they don't even look like anything special I don't I was I was going to keep these for myself honestly uh, because that's my theme of my house but I just thought I'd look them up and I'm, I'm glad I did and I and I did keep that teal one and I did hang that one on my wall okay and I got this at a at a thrift store. This is for 63 cents. Believe it or not, I couldn't believe it. Uh, it's a Lala Loopsy uh, kimono mini doll. Um, Yuki Kimono is her name. And she sold for $33, which brought me a profit of almost $28. Now, she probably took about six months or so to sell, but this is a tiny doll. I mean, it was like this big, so I didn't mind holding it for, for long at all. Okay, now moving into Poshmark. Now on Poshmark, I don't sell a whole lot. As I said before, I don't sell a whole lot of clothes. So it's a lot of odds and ends that I sell on Poshmark. Actually, not a lot of odds and ends because I only had six sales in Poshmark in the month of June for a profit of $118. So I'm only going to show you two things right now. And let's, so the first one is this Disney Tigger backpack. He was really adorable and I just loved him. I paid only $2.14 for him at a thrift store, which brought me a profit of only $14.60. Now, he was broken. I didn't realize this until I got him home that his strap was broken and it had just been tied around here. Otherwise, he would have been worth more. So that's why I wanted to share this one with you because if you do find one that's in better condition where the strap isn't broken, um, he, you could probably get closer to thirty or forty dollars, so I'm still gonna. I still think that's a definite pickup for someone, and because he sold pretty quickly, I would say in about a week or so. And this was in my one of my thrift with me videos. I got this a big set of these, a huge set of various cups and bowls, all this same design and color. And I think I was able to make five or six different sets out of it. And I paid twenty dollars for this the giant set. Let me say set one more time. So what I did is I just divided and averaged it out per set. I did it. So I'm going to say I paid $2 for these items. And I sold them for $35, which brought me a profit of $26. And I still have, I think, four more sets of these <laughs> to sell. Okay, moving on to Facebook Marketplace. I sold 14 items for a profit of $423. Now, June was pretty disappointing for me in Facebook Marketplace. There's been some ongoing issues with items not getting views, so I really didn't sell as much as I normally do on that platform. And unfortunately, here it is almost end of July, 
and it's the same issues, but I still encourage you to keep listing because I'm still making sales and you possibly could too. And you never know when the glitches will be fixed. Anyway, so let me show you what I have sold. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first item I'm gonna show you is the set of four Sea Life cross stitch embroidery wall arts that I paid $3 for at a yard sale. And they sold pretty quickly, I would say in a matter of days. Um, so this brought me a profit of $34. And these are actually kind of small. They're not that big. Uh, but they, yeah, so there's right there. They're only eight inches each. But they were super cute, very well done. And because there was a set, I think they were able to bring a de decent price. Up next, I have this Disney Store Monsters, Inc. Roz stuffed animal. This is such a random stuffed animal for someone to want, but... You know, if it, you ever see random Disney characters, any character, I always look those up. Uh, I paid $2 for this at a yard sale, and it sold for $35, which brought me a, a profit of $31. And there's the tag there. I just loved her. You can just sense her sass. Mike Wazowski. Nova. Was oh, that going to get your attention? Nova. Nova Wazowski. No. You're lazier than Mike. Okay, moving on. For the tired puppy, I paid $4.29 for this uh, pew, pew, well, that doesn't sound right, P-U, uh, for this coverlet. I paid $4 for this coverlet at a thrift store and I sold it for 60, which brought me a profit of $52. And I have another one just like it, so I was able just to copy and paste this listing. Um, so there's there's the tag there and it's just really nice this is like a thinner cotton coverlet now a coverlet is like a blanket that fits over your your bed and it goes down the sides it's longer than a comforter thin like a blanket uh, that that's what they're called they're called a matelasse coverlet and this is something i learned from when i sold curtains and bed spreads <laughs> with all the other with all the other all other ladies i guess i was a young old lady up next i have this baby's r us polar bear stuffed animal from 2015 he sold for 35 dollars only paid a dollar for him and i've talked about this before but if you ever see babies r us or toys r us items you always want to be sure to look them up because the company has been defunct for quite some time now and people are looking for these stuffed animals that they got from the store. Okay, and the last item I'm gonna share with you is this Imaginex SpongeBob SquarePants Glove World Fisher Price playset. This is from 2013, and this particular item was pretty rare and hard to find. I paid $5.36 for this. Look, I said I wasn't gonna say cents, but here I am still saying at the end of this video. Anyways, this brought me a profit of $41, and I picked this up at a kids' consignment sale. And the person that bought it, she was so excited to get this. She said it was for her little boy, and she even sent me a picture of him playing with it when she got it. It was so adorable. I love getting messages like that. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you found some new bolos. If you did, please leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned for next week when I show you the rest of what's sold in the month of June. We'll see you later. Bye! Oh, she's awake. Yeah. <sighs>